Our final speaker this evening is Tim Draper. Is there a Tim in the room? Woo! Hold on, Tim. I have to just tell people a little bit about you. Actually, please come up. Please come up. No, no, come up, come up, come up, come up. Come up. Yeah, you're coming up. You're going to stand here on this spot, on the E spot. Okay. Good. Yes. This will be a whole new experience. Um, so, I first. How are you doing, Eric? Yeah, I'm <laughs> good to see you. <laughs> so, there was a time when I used to work for the UK Prime Minister, and Tim came to town, and. <laughs> And it was never the same. It wasn't. We <clears throat> decided with Lord Errol to go to the House of Lords. We brought a lovely group of entrepreneurs, and you were going to give them an inspiring talk. He almost got us arrested because you don't sing in the House of Lords. <laughs> he made us. He brought a boombox with him, right? You're a little right, and we sang. I sang the Wrist Master. It was great. <laughs> They loved it. They loved it. They loved it. But and then as we walked out, they said, we just broke three laws. It's like treason, but it was awesome. Yeah, that was <laughs> Thank fun. Thank you so much. That Please take, take a seat. Which, which side? Uh, you you're on this side. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So you kindly said, I can ask you anything. I just love that. That's so good. <laughs> I have this list. <laughs> but actually, I did ask a few people, what do you want to ask Tim? Um, some of them asked, uh, just to confirm what price... By the, way, you... by the way, the best interviews I get are the ones, is if you want, if you want really good interview questions, yeah. go to a high school. They are so good at asking questions. Oh, okay. They are brilliant. They ask these very... You have to kind of wrap your heads around. Okay, but anyway, we'll, go ahead. We'll do some you dumb, did even... dumb questions then from our, from our team. Sorry. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm counting on greatness here. So uh, one of the questions was, how much did you pay for the Bitcoin that you bought in the Rangers auction per Bitcoin and how many did you buy? So um, now you Marshall's can read auctions. my book and find yeah. this out. But, uh, but since you're here... Um, Just between us. Okay, so when... Um, it's funny. Right? I'll tell you the whole story because I... I Paid. I was my first two hundred fifty thousand dollars into Bitcoin went into um, get an A6 so that I could get Bitcoin at four dollars a Bitcoin, and the A6 the people who made the A6. Anybody here from Butterfly Labs? You owe me money. <laughs> anyway, they they held on. They they held on to the um, to the chip and yeah. they. They used the chip and they did a bunch of mining. And meanwhile, Bitcoin went up to 36 bucks. And then we got that. We got some. We finally got the chip. We started mining. Mm -hmm. And we got a bunch of Bitcoin. And we put it into this very secure exchange, Mount Cold Gox. Mount Gox. And, uh, and then that money, that disappeared. My money was, was disappeared. And, uh, and then I got... Um, and then I thought, oh, too bad, because I thought virtual currency was really going to take off. I thought it was going to, this is so important for the world, and we were going to have this new kind of currency, and it was going to be awesome. And, um, and I thought, that's the end of it. But Bitcoin only dropped about 10 or 15% that day on that news, that basically the biggest exchange just stole a whole bunch of money. That's quite low, right, as a drop. For, for that kind of news. Yeah, it was nothing. Yeah. It was what we had today. <laughs> so so um, I, I thought, wait a second. People really need this. This is really important. Okay. And so I started to buy a little bit at a time. And I love the way amounts. you lose money and it just makes you want to buy more. Small like amounts. I put more in a little bit at a time. Um, that price was around 250 And then it was it was starting to really rip and the and the US Marshals yeah, office Marshall. confiscated the the Silk Road money uh, Bitcoin and uh, they put it up for auction and <laughs> all the bidders uh, were all people I knew they were all kind of you know the other venture capitalists and a couple of other people and they were all talking about what kind of a deal they were gonna get there were nine lots and how it was going to be below market. Market was 618 at the time. 618. 618. And I thought, you know, if I want this stuff, I might as well bid above market. Counterintuitive. And counterintuitive. And I thought, what, here was my thinking. Either 
this thing goes to nothing and, you know, too bad. Or it goes sky high and nobody's going to care if, it's, if I paid 5% more. So I, I bid 632. And I didn't just get one lot. I got all the lots. Not surprising. So I was a little bit heavy in Bitcoin there for a while. <laughs> and, uh, and how, how many did you buy in the nine lots? Uh, I Can think it's about 40,000. 40,000. Okay, nice one. Are you a hodler? I am a hodler. Hodler. I'm a hodler. Sorry. In fact, yeah, it's, it's in my song. By the way, see if you can find the Bitcoin hustle. It's my, my newest song. <laughs> We're going to have Bitcoin to learn it. Bitcoin hustle. Bitcoin hustle. Do the Bitcoin hustle. Yeah. No. Get your hustle going. Flex your crypto muscle. Yeah. Yeah. Excuse me. Oh. <laughs> So much for we're not going to sing. Um, okay. Uh, I wait, wait to, is it illegal here too? No, no, here, here it's compulsory. Okay. Um, I'd like to know about uh, consensus. Um, do Brilliant we need, people. Okay. Yeah, no, uh, they're not bad as well. Run a good event. Almost as good as this one. The discussions um, are around, do we need to continue to mine to have trust in, in crypto? Well, I think it's a great way to have trust. I think it's a great system that was set up. Um, it does generate, it does create or, and use a lot of energy. But, um, but what's great is that you know that when you buy some Bitcoin or you move something on a block, that it is secure. And you know that all those people, all those computers, are making sure that that block was moved properly. And that and there are plenty of hacks around the crypto world, but the Bitcoin blockchain has never been hacked and, you know, knock on wood, we don't think it ever will be. Actually, uh, one of um, our speakers did, and, and I think that that um, having that consensus brings it brings that extra confidence. In fact, I am more confident in my Bitcoin than I am in the dollars in Wells Fargo. And so it's a price worth paying. Because they get hacked all the time. Yeah. You know that's Well, because you know where they are, right? They're kind of centralized. That's yeah. the issue. Yeah. I mean, it's a kind of a price worth paying. And one of our previous speakers at the previous uh, conference in St. Moritz, uh, I think it was Jennifer, so you she said, yeah, but have you thought about how much energy it takes and chemicals to mine gold? And I wonder what that comparison's like. But yet we seem quite happy with that. So the small price to pay for the certainty also, you know, people are getting cleverer about uh, energy use, and, it's, and they're doing it at Niagara Falls, and they're doing it out in the middle of the Sahara Desert, and they're, they're figuring out low-cost energy sources. And the other thing that's going to happen is, as it always has, Moore's Law is going to continue to drive the, the cost of a chip, the processing of a chip, down. And, and that's going to happen over time. We're going we're to see that that energy cost is going to be uh, minuscule or at least not significant. Uh, you just go four years down and you've got one, two, three, probably three doubles. So it'll be about an eighth of the cost. Okay. I think you're going to see, you know, all those arguments it, yeah. about energy, I think, don't matter. I certainly hope so. Um, so... How do we use all this tech to make the world a better place? You know, I am glad you've asked that. This, um, the, the world uh, currently is controlled by fiefdoms. And the fiefdoms were all driven by land-based control. And all the people who live on that land, they control you. And they did it by, by controlling your currency and saying, this is how much you can have, and this is what your currency is worth, and this is, we're, this is how much we're going to print for you, and then we're going to print this much for us, you know, the government. And, uh, and the governments throughout the world have run this way in fiefdoms. It's like little tribes all around the planet. All of a sudden, there's this decentralized currency. It opens up the whole world. I mean, the Internet opened up the whole world. We all started to get to know each other. But, and the geographic borders started to fall. But now, at this 
this virtual level, um, the virtuous level, we'll call it the virtuous oh. level. Um, now all these currencies can be used anywhere and it's, and it's freaking out the fiefdoms, but for the free spirits of the world, it's going, people are going, yes, this is awesome because we now can, I can, I can go anywhere in the world and just pull down my Bitcoin and spend it and buy whatever I need to buy and, and then I can go to another place. And it's not tied to a central location. You know, whenever I go by a bank, actually, when I walk by a bank with my son, Adam, we, we go, huh, well, that one will be for sale. But then, but then the other thing, we look at it, every time I look at the bank, I think, that's such a big, spectacular building. And all those people that are coming out of that bank are wearing really nice clothes. And that's all my money they're holding in that bank. And then I go and I, I plug a ledger in, and I download some cryptocurrency, and I pull out the ledger and I say, there's my bank. That is secure. It's off the, you know, it's, it's yeah. in cold storage. It's off the cloud. And that is my bank. And I don't need to, to make all of them. I mean, I'm happy that they're all rich, but I don't have to make them rich. And this is a great feeling. So if, if some of you are just curious investors, if you're a curious investor, do, do one thing. Go buy a ledger, plug it into your machine, download some Bitcoin, something else, whatever, put it on there, and get that feeling. That feeling is just magical. Just don't drop it in the bath, right? Right, yeah. Don't kind of, drop it in the bath. It's probably not ill-advised. Uh, right. By the way, have you met Jeffrey? Because you guys, I think you know you 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 sound very similar in some respects. <laughs> Just saying. Good. There are other people out there. <laughs> now look, um, there are your kindred spirits. Indeed, your family kind of invented VC in the valley. You're, you're, you're what My was, grandfather had a yeah. big hand in that. He was the first venture capitalist in the Silicon Valley. And so everybody that My I... My dad was a pioneer in venture capital. Absolutely. Kind of worked out that first LPGP kind of thing. Yeah, by the way, it, it was, it's amazing because when you think about the value that's been created, it's, it is terrific. It's a dynasty. And most of the entrepreneurs that I meet want to, want to send you the deck. So, would I, I know right? I get some amazing deal flow. Yeah, that what? is definitely true. D do you because when you start a business, it, it was interesting. My strategy was go down to the earliest stage because if you get them then, and you make the investment, then there there's this bond you've created with an entrepreneur, and if they become successful, you'll be in, there'll be an opportunity to invest later and more right. and whatever you need to do. Later on, you can have good relationship and you can... Uh, but you see, most uh, successful VCs like yourself move north in value. They become private equity. I love that you've stayed connected with entrepreneurs. Where does that come from? Um, it is so much fun. I, <laughs> this is a really fun job. I get to meet so many interesting people and some of these entrepreneurs are just bursting out of their chest. And I, it gives me a window on the future, and I get a sense for how things are going to play out because of the entrepreneurs that come in. I have no idea what's happening today. I don't know what Trump said, or I don't know any of the stuff. I don't watch the news. I read a lot, but sure. I, and I read my email a lot, and sometimes they tell me what's going on in the news. But I, I have a very good picture of what's going on five or ten years from now, and what our lives are going to be like so, and where, where we're headed because all these extraordinary entrepreneurs come to me. I can, but you see, that's what's interesting to investors. A lot of investors here, uh, you, you know, that kind of deal flow is not really accessible to them uh, unless they invest in funds. I mean, can people invest in your funds? Okay, I, <laughs> yes. Are they allowed, it was a question saying, are they allowed to? I wasn't asking you to pitch Well, anything. we have, you know, it's interesting. Um, yeah, now we have a fund, and it's always uh, for super high net worth individuals or families or um, institutions. But I tried, I've tried many times to bring that down to everybody. Um, I, right. 
But see, then the SEC is giving us a little trouble with the tokenization. So we've got to be, we, we've got to figure out how this is going to work so that I know who they're trying to protect. They're trying to protect people who are 75 and they've put their, their life savings into the wrong thing and then it's gone. But if you're 25 and you're yeah. just starting out, you're going to want to, you, you know, you probably wanted to buy some Bitcoin and maybe you couldn't or buy some private, ec private stocks, maybe you couldn't, because they've regulated you out. Um, and I think that is a, a problem. But yeah, our funds are, are generally for super high uh, net worth I people. And you and Jeffrey are kindred spirits. You're, exactly, you're definitely <laughs> on track. Please thank Tim Draper. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Great to see you again.